my name is Hugo Bernier, and today, hopefully, I will be demoing my React Compare web part uh, with the file picker. Uh, I'm a really friendly guy, so if you have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, do not hesitate to contact me. My Twitter account is, is here. It's Bernie H., and my blog is tahoeninjas.blog. Uh, um, so I was just working on... Um, a control that I needed. I needed a control to be able to compare two images side by side. And I'm the world's laziest developer, so I, I, if I can avoid writing code, I will avoid. I will. I will look for things that I can reuse, things that are available out of the box, and uh, I, I can find anything uh, that I needed. So I, I actually looked at the uh, React um, Office Fabric UI, which had a um, control that allows you to compare things uh, side by side. Um, and they use this in their Fluent uh, site. You know, uh, Office Fabric is going to become uh, Microsoft UI Fabric, and eventually they're going to integrate uh, the Fluent style in their components, which will make the experience of uh, web applications look very, very close to or more in line with the uh, desktop applications. And what I needed was a control that I could use to compare things side by side, just like you can do here. Hopefully, you can see I'm moving uh, the, a slider here, and I can see the before and after look. And I was I was um, looking everywhere. I couldn't find a control, so I decided, you know what? I'll just build my own control. And as I was building the control, I thought, you know what? It would be really great if I could actually have a button on each side uh, that would allow users to um, select a file uh, from from the SharePoint file picker. So I looked everywhere, uh, again, for an out-of-the-box uh, SharePoint file picker. I didn't find anything. I looked in the property controls, uh, the, uh, the PNP reusable controls, didn't find anything. I was just wrapping up doing uh, the rich text control for the, uh, the PNP reusable control. Um, I have a script, uh, demo of it uh, here, and maybe that's something I can demo at another time. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to write my own file picker. So I looked at the uh, file picker that's available in SharePoint. Uh, this is the image uh, web part that's available out of the box in SharePoint. And when you select uh, add image, it, what it actually does, it pops up this dialog that hopefully all of you have seen before, which shows uh, your recent files, allows you to search, uh, allows you to pick files from a OneDrive, files from your site, allows you to upload uh, files and share from a link. So I decided, you know, I'm going to create this control. Um, and the goal was to create a control that would be easy to add to um, your, anyone's application that would uh, that would not require special permissions or anything like that, and I wanted the control to look as much as possible uh, exactly like the file picker control. So this is uh, this is the web part that I created. Uh, it's called the compare web part, uh, and when you add it, it asks you to add um, images. If you click on uh, Add Images and click on Choose Image, this control here is actually uh, my custom control. So it allows me to look at my recent images. It allows me to search. It allows me to pick documents from OneDrive, and so on and so forth. So let me actually pick uh, documents uh, just to show. Um, so I'll go in my sample pictures here, and I'll pick a before image. And then I'll go to my other file picker, and I will pick an after image. Oops, after. And now what I should have is something that, well, it doesn't look very, uh, doesn't seem to be a, a good example here. But um, you can see that the idea here is I can pick images and put them side by side. Uh, so how did I do this? Uh, what I did is I actually went through the file picker that was available out of the box, and then I used the uh, the developer tools 
to actually start exploring what each component was. So I clicked on, you know, the uh, the navigation in the lift, and I actually looked at, okay, well, it's got uh, the classes here. Um, for example, I was just using an example here. So I saw here there's this this class called MS Nav Group, and you know, as a general rule, anything that starts with MS Dash is probably coming from Microsoft. Um, so I actually figured, okay, so this is a Microsoft control, the MS Dash Nav Group. I actually went to the uh, Office UI Fabric uh, repository. Uh, if uh, if you haven't used that, it's actually a great uh, source to learn. It's actually github.office.dev. And uh, under GitHub Office Dev, you have the Office UI Fabric React. And if once you're in there, you search for ms uh, what did I say? ms-nav group. So ms-nav group. You find, yeah, this class is actually used somewhere in the code. And uh, so I was able to actually find uh, the controls that were used uh, by going kind of one, one component at a time. Uh, for example, I went to this here. I found that this is using something called an item tile. Uh, so I looked uh, and found item tile. Uh, it turns out, by the way, that in uh, the Office uh, UI Fabric uh, item tile, you have kind of a something called an item tile and a tile list. Uh, those are controls that are in Office UI Fabric. Unfortunately, they're still in the experiments package. So it's not quite supported yet. You're not quite supposed to use it in production. So uh, I had to actually rewrite uh, my version of those controls when I did that. Uh, but I basically I went through one control at a time and copied the styles, the look, and the feel, um, and uh, rebuilt this whole thing. The other thing that I did, uh, and uh, Anjani had a question in the in the uh, in the chat window here: How do uh, what's an example of getting the most recently used files? Well, if you look at the recent tab in the the file picker you'll actually find that this is what it's doing. It's actually going to your, in this case, the most recently uh, used images. But if you look at your uh, network um, in your developer tools and you actually monitor the traffic, uh, you'll notice that as you click, you will actually see different calls being made. Now, there's tons of calls being made, um, you know, to... To uh, I know some it's probably some telemetrics or things like that, but eventually you will find, and I'm not going to be able to to find it in in this presentation today, but you'll find the actual code that gets made when uh, SharePoint uh, does the search for a recent or a web search or something like that. So what I did is if I open the code because that's probably what you guys are here for, uh, is I went and I actually captured that network traffic. And then I went and I created uh, services. So if I go here under uh, services, I have a OneDrive service, uh, OneDrive service, and I actually recreated the call uh, to be able to to retrieve the information. So this is, you know, it almost feels hard coded. I feel bad about this, but this is the actual call that gets made uh, by uh, by the dialog, and I just reproduce that. You'll notice here that I'm actually using, uh, in the case of going to my OneDrive, I'm using uh, SP Remote Web uh, to allow me to make uh, HTTP calls to another uh, URL, uh, in, in this case, my OneDrive. Um, that's something that I was not able to do using the PNP.js uh, um, package. Um, I actually opened an issue with that to be able to add support for remote web uh, calls. Uh, so I had to actually hard code the, not hard code, but I had to create the, the fetch call myself without using PMPGS. But if you look um, quickly, and I'm trying, I'm really trying hard not to click around too much because I know it can get really hard to read. Uh, but if you look in my web part component, um, I have now a new property control called property pane file picker. And it allows me to you know, to uh, do things, for example, what type of images am I going to be expecting? 
When I built this control, I built it to support uh, both uh, images and documents, but I only tested it for images. That was my, my primary goal. And I have the ability to control whether I want to be able to do things like searching and things like that. Uh, behind the scene, the control is implemented as a bunch of tabs. Um, the one thing I want to make clear, when I built this, uh, you'll notice the out-of-the-box uh, picker has a few inconsistencies. Uh, it's It seems like, and it's probably, Vesa and, and company can probably tell me whether that's the case or not, but it really feels like each tab was built by a different team, and as a result, there's, there's minor discrepancies in the HTML behind the scene. Uh, for example, if you look at the site, you have document libraries, you don't have a way to change the views, but if you look at the OneDrive, you have the ability to change views, and you have uh, a file count inside the folders. Um, as tempting as it was for me to try to fix those discrepancies when I when I wrote this component, I made sure to to reproduce as much as possible the components exactly as they were, with the in inconsistencies, uh, with the uh, you know the little things that were kind of driving me nuts because I wanted everything to be perfect. Um, and that's something when you're looking at the code and you're you're looking at this and you're saying, well, why didn't Hugo optimize this by reusing this component or by reusing this class? That's why I did it this way. Um, and I've always been taught that uh, you know uh, optimization is enemy of en the enemy of innovation. So my first focus was to make sure that I got this out there. There's going to be opportunities to improve this, hopefully, as we go further. Uh, so uh, for Anjani, for example, Anjani wanted to know how do I get the reset files tab. Uh, this is actually the call that uh, gets made. Um, I think that's the one recent files. Yeah, this is the call that gets made by uh, by SharePoint, which I converted to use PMP JS to do a search uh, based on last modified time. And whatever the results that I receive, I actually display that in a in a file picker type. Uh, um, I'm just being concerned about time here. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out, and I actually wrote this in the instructions to install this web part, uh, is the the search component, the web search component. If I actually go show it to you for a second, uh, the web search. Hold on. Uh, it allows you to search just like the out-of-the-box uh, component does. Um, this is actually using uh, the Bing API. And the Bing API needs an API key. So what I did is I actually configured the, this tab, first of all, so that you can disable it, but also uh, that you can, uh, you can um, go to the SPO set, storage entity set to set an API key at the tenant level. Um, and if you do that once uh, for your entire tenant, your entire tenant can use the shared API key. Uh, if you have any questions about how to do this, uh, you can uh, give me a shout on uh, Twitter, and I'll, I'll be able to show you that. Um, so as a result, I built this component. Again, it's inside of a web part. But uh, then what I did is I actually submitted a request, or not a request, an issue to the SP Dev Effects Property Controls, uh, saying, hey, anybody interested in this? It seems like I got a lot of comments. A lot of people are interested. So um, now that my rich text control is, is out, I will be converting the code from this web part to a reusable control. Um, that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate uh, to reach out to me. Uh, I have written here the URL to the web part and a blog, a blog post that explains the process I went through. And I'm sure I can count on David. Well, there he is, David Warner, to actually have the links there. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Hugo. So first of all, you're absolutely correct. The individual tabs are being built by a different persons, uh, which is a pity, but it is what it is right now. Um, one thing what we are also looking into potentially do internally, uh, which might still take a while, is to get the whole system as a reusable component, which would, by the way, make sense. Um, but until that will happen, and I can't confirm will it happen at all, um, having your tooling available will make a lot of sense. So really good stuff, uh, really, really great implementation. And, and it's kind of, 
how would I put it? It's always slightly scary when we do reverse engineering, but um, I would say, Hugo, thank you for doing this because this will help to justify also making the first party components potentially at some point open source or available, right? So even though that would happen at some point, it's definitely not uh, worth of worth of uh, investments and the work that you've done. So super, super useful. And also the APIs um, which we're using and which are using behind of the scenes, we need to get them documented. So absolutely makes sense. But thank you, Hugo. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Absolutely awesome stuff.